good evening uh, today we have a case presentation on previous lscs in pregnancy uh, mrs sex who is a gravida to para one living one of age 24 years hailing from chennai of lower middle class uh, family belonging to kupasame classification who is booked with us with her last menstrual period on 8th july 2021 with her estimated date of delivery on 14th uh, April 2022, with gestational age of 38 weeks plus 3 days, came to the OPD with complaints of abdomen pain on and off for the past 2 hours, perceiving fetal movements well. There is no complaints of bleeding PV, leaking PV or any burning maturation. History of present illness. Patient had complaints of abdomen pain on and off for the past 2 hours, which was in serious and onset, gradually increasing in intensity and frequency, not relieved by rest or medication. There was no complaints of any bleeding PV, leaking PV, burning maturation or an imminent symptoms. Imminent symptoms of? Uh, headache, blurring of vision, penile edema, decreased urine output and swelling of legs. Okay. Menstrual history. She attained menarche at 12 years of age, had a regular 3 by 30 day cycle, changes 2 pads per day. There was no history of passage of clots or dysmenorrhea. Marital history. She is married for 4 years. It's a non-consanguineous marriage. So, if her cycle is every 30 days, uh, how will you correct the Nagli's formula? If it's uh, 28 days, no, it is ni 9 months and 7 days, ma'am. In a 30 day cycle? We have to add 2 days uh, for that. Yes. Obstetric history. Obstetric history. First trimester, it was a spontaneous conception, confirmed by urine pregnancy test at 45 days of amenorrhea, confirmed by dating scan, mucal translucency scan was done. There was no history of nausea, vomiting, abdominal pain, spotting PV or any radiation exposure or fever with rash. Tablet folic acid 5 mg taken regularly. Second trimester, quickening felt at 5 months of amenorrhea, anomaly scan and growth scan was done and it was normal. OGTT was done and it was normal. Injection TD, two doses were taken. There was no history of headache, blurring of vision, epigastric pain, decreased urine output or burning maturation. No history of any abdominal pain, easy fatigability or breathlessness. Third trimester, she perceived fetal movements well. Interval growth scan was done and was normal. Tablet iron and calcium were taken regularly. She had complaints of abdomen pain on and off for the past two hours. There was no complaints of bleeding PV, leaking PV or burning maturation or imminent symptoms. Past medical history, she is not a known case of diabetes mellitus, hypertension, bronchial asthma, thyroid disorder, epilepsy, cardiac disease, blood transfusion or any drug allergy. Surgical history, apart from a previous cesarean section, the other were nil significant. Family history was nil significant. General examination, on examination, patient is moderately built and nourished, afebrile, no paler, no pedal edema. Her height was 150 cm with weight of 64 kgs. Vitals were being stable with blood pressure of 110-17 mm of mercury, pulse rate of 90 beats per minute. Thyroid glands, breast and spine appeared normal. Systemic examination, cardiovascular system and uh, respiratory system were unremarkable. Parabdomen inspection, abdomen is longitudinally distended. Stria gravidorum and linea nigra were present. There was no engorged veins or vessels. There was uh, abdominal wall edema was present. Suprapubic trance was carved pleasant with mild tenderness. Okay. Palpation, symphysia fundal height corresponded to 38 centimeters. First grip, it was a broad, soft, non bellotable mass felt, probably breech. Second grip, uniform curved resistance fell on the right side with multiple irregular nodules felt on the left side. Third grip, a hard, mobile, independently bellotable part, probably cephalic. Fourth grip, confirms the first grip and head was not engaged. Auscultation, fetal heart sounds were heard on the right spinal umbilical line of about 150 beats per minute. Per speculum, cervix and vagina were healthy. There was no leaking or bleeding PV. Per vagina, cervix soft, posterior, 2.5 cm long, os was closed, presenting punt vertex was higher. Management, patient came with the labor pains. As patient had scar tenderness, she was taken up for an emergency repeat cesarean section. Yes. So, what are the dangers of post cesarean section if this pregnancy? Uh, she can have a scar rupture where there is a rupture of the uterus in the previous scar is the most dangerous complication which increases the maternal and perinatal mortality and the morbidity. The rupture may be in the form of a complete rupture or a dehiscence and can there can be a placental attachment which can be a placental uh, previa and a placenta morbid additions can be there. Okay. So, there are also some other risks in the first trimester like she can undergo miscarriages and there are also chances of Caesarean scar ectopic pregnancy when the ectopic pregnancy is at the site of the previous caesarean section. Okay. What is the incidence of scar rupture? Uh, overall incidence in transverse lower segment caesarean section scar is about 0.5% and the incidence increases with number of caesarean section. In case of a classical or a hysterotomy scar, the incidence increases by 3 to 4 times than that of a normal lower segment caesarean, caesarean section. section. 
Yeah, so uh, in the lower segment, it is around a point five percent. Yeah, and in hysterectomy, it is around four percent. Yeah. What are the factors of scar on which the chance of scar rupture depends? Uh, it depends upon the type of cesarean section. It can either be a lower segment cesarean section or a classical cesarean section, which is the upper uterine or a hysterotomy, and also on the integrity of the scar. Okay. So, what do you mean by integrity of the scar? Uh, the integrity of the scar means how efficiently a scar will behave to withstand the burden of the next pregnancy, so far as a dehiscence or a rupture is concerned. Simply, it means that uh, to denote whether the scar will be strong or weak. Okay. So, how will you assess the integrity of a scar? Uh, it depends upon various factors. The first is the type of cesarean section. So, whether it is a classical upper uterine se cesarean section or a lower uterine. Because the lower uterine cesarean section scar is much more stronger than that of the upper uterine segment or hysterotomy scar as discussed earlier. Then the type of incision is the single most important factor that will determine the integrity of a scar. And whether it is an elective or an emergency section, because in elective cesarean section, it is more expected to be much more sound than that of an emergency cesarean section scar. And the indication of a cesarean section is in case of a prolonged labor or in case of a placenta previa, the scar will become uh, weak. 